and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica and I run Jessica Lynn Illustration, which actually is an official business. I filed for a DBA a couple months ago and I also have a tax certificate so I can collect sales tax. And I wanted to do a studio vlog. If you saw my last video, it was kind of like a chatty catch-up video about where I've been and what I'm looking forward to and what I'm working on, which actually is markets. And if this seems out of the blue, it's because it is. <laughs> I have all this motivation and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos and I really wanted to do some markets. So I filled out some applications and paid for spaces and I currently don't have anything to really sell. So that's what these studio vlogs are going to be me doing and working on leading up to the first market, which is actually less than a month away. Kind of freaking out. It's going to be June 9th and 10th at a nearby winery. So it's a... Uh, smaller event in terms of vendors. It's a huge event for them. They have a car show, bands, um, food, but in terms of like actual booths and vendors, I think it's only maybe like 15 spaces, maybe 20. Um, I go to it myself as a patron customer. Um, so I've never done any art markets ever. So getting everything together for the first market is going to be huge and a lot of stress and a lot of things. But once I have those things, the markets going forward are going to be much easier. So there's a lot I have to do in the next month um, to get ready. Not only getting the booth set up and the displays itself, but the products that I'm going to be working on. I have no idea what's going to be popular or what people are going to be interested in buying. So I'm kind of just making products that I'm going to want to make and I'm just going to estimate quantities and we'll just have to reevaluate after the first market. So we have a few things that we're going to be doing in this studio vlog to prep for the market. I'm going to show you my plans. I did a whole drawing of my booth and what I'm thinking in terms of how I want it set up and the kind of products that I want to have and how I want to display them. I'm going to show you a couple paintings that I've already done that I'm going to turn into products. I got some samples today for some things, um, some print samples, I got some fabric samples, so that's really exciting. I signed up for a square reader, so that got delivered and I'm going to unbox that. So yeah, let's just uh, jump into my plan. So my desk is a little messy, so I apologize, but here is the uh, market prep planning book that I have and on the very first or last page, whatever, is my plan. So let me zoom in. I tried to do this in somewhat of a scale of a 10 by 10 space. It seems to be the standard for these art craft fair markets. So I measured out 10 inches and basically an inch will equal a foot. It's not going to be super accurate, but it just gives me an idea of what I'm thinking. So 10 by 10 tent, and then I was thinking of a six foot banner in the back and a eight foot table. We don't have any eight foot tables. We have a couple six foot and four foot. So I may either adjust this display as I get products or I'll end up buying an eight foot table. Let's start over here on the right. Some products that I was really interested in doing was a tea towel and some tea mugs along with some prints. And these would be on those grid displays a lot of people use for conventions and stuff. I would display one of my tea towels in full and then have some folded up on a shelf. And then underneath that, I would have some mugs that I wanted to have my artwork probably sublimated on, which we will talk about later. A couple art prints. I'm not sure how I'm gonna, how many I'm gonna end up with, but this was just an idea of at least four possibly. 
and then underneath I was thinking of getting those little mini canvases that are on um, mini easels and displaying them out front. I would have a little stack of business cards and then have like a central checkout station. I've seen where people do a wooden crate turned on its side so that it's open in the back and you can tuck things in behind like a, a cash box and just some valuables. And then in front of that we can you can display like the sign of what you accept in terms of like cash and credit cards. And then um, I would also probably put my square reader on top or in the back and in front of that like while people are checking out I will have an email sign up list. I have a bunch of pins that I've previously done. I still have quite a few left so I think I'll put them in a basket next to the checkout station just because they're smaller items. I have over here a frame and I'm not sure if I want to display a price list here or do a framed original. I think I might end up doing prices on everything individually or nearby the items because from some videos I've seen on YouTube, whether they're art markets or craft markets, one of the tips they said was to put the prices clearly marked on the individual products so that way if you're busy talking to someone, someone doesn't have to ask you or if people are scared to talk to you, which a lot of people are and I guess I am one of those people too where I don't feel comfortable asking the price of something unless it's something like I really want. So that way people don't have to talk to you if you have things clearly labeled. So I think I'm going to end up going that route and then I'll either do a framed original or this whole setup was going to change and I don't have to worry about that. And then over here on the other side I'm going to do a card rack and I think I'm going to do approximately six greeting cards. So I have to come up with six greeting card designs. And then something I really wanted to do was like a weekly planner, the tear off pad ones. So you have um, Monday through Sunday or Sunday through Saturday and like to do lists and something that I think would be pretty handy. And then also to kind of go along with that planner, either have just a plain list pad or possibly a daily planner pad. I don't know. I'm going to see how um, how my designs turn out and what I end up deciding. And then I obviously want to have a tablecloth that goes all the way to the bottom so that way you can put extra stock and things underneath and you don't see it or else it, I think it looks it doesn't look as aesthetic. I'm trying to make my first booth look as uh, like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then just for some kind of like decorations, I was thinking of taking whatever design I have on my tea towel and possibly doing that for a bunting to hang on my tent and or possibly have just a solid piece of fabric to hang over my plain tablecloth as a pop of color or just something too pretty to look at. So now let me show you some of those designs that I've turned into paintings already. One of those first designs that I told you I was working on was the weekly planner and this is my first test painting. So I actually think this looks better on the camera from a distance than it does up close. I was not happy with how this turned out. The next design I wanted to work on was the envelope of flowers. So this was the first design I did with that, but I wasn't exactly happy with the three blue flowers in the center. Now that I'm looking at it, I feel like it's all right. But for some reason, I really just didn't like the center portion of this. And I actually painted a second one. So here is that second design. And I feel like this design has a little more variety, but I also did not like that I put a flower pointing out when these are pointing up. I don't know, maybe I'm just being a perfectionist. 
which I don't have time to be a perfectionist. I really should just pick one of these designs today and move on. The next thing I wanted to work on was that tea towel to go with the tea mugs. And I knew I wanted some kind of floral pattern or a seamless design for that. And here is what I came up with. I actually really love this, how this turned out. This is one of my favorite paintings so far. And then you can see the negative heart in the center. So I don't think I'll do any tweaking to this other than possibly scanning it in and learning how to make this a repeat pattern design. So I was trying to come up with ways to be able to still make something of a quality product. And I think what I've decided I'm gonna do is actually order fabric through Spoonflower. If you don't know anything about Spoonflower, it's a website that will um, make custom fabric so you can upload your designs and they'll print it on um, whatever kind of fabric you want. They have different kinds of fabric you can choose from and then they'll ship it to you. So I think that's the route I'm gonna go. I actually have a sewing machine in my closet that I've not touched in years and it might take me a little bit to get out and get going again, um, but I used to sew in the past. So a tea towel is just really a, a square, a rectangle, so it shouldn't be that hard. And I actually ordered some um, spoon flower samples. So that's gonna be something we unbox in this video together. And ideally, I'd like to order some fabric today. So, but I still have yet to scan this in and look at making a pattern design. So that might take a while. And then the last painting that I have worked on is this. This was that mug design I told you that was the kind of like rainbow of flowers that would wrap around the mug and then also be a card design which would probably be a landscape card design. I'm not 100% happy with this one either. Um, some of the flowers look a little crazy like I think these purple flowers are a little too big and then I started to do another blue flower design and then just stopped because I didn't like it so I think I might get rid of that and then this is supposed to be a poppy. I didn't like how that turned out. And the daisies, or not daisies, um, dandelions, I thought I put up a little too high. So I don't know how much post editing I can do with these watercolor paintings. So I may end up just repainting this all together as well. So those are the only designs I currently have done. Um, there's still several in my sketchbook that I wanted to work on. And then also, like I said, we have some samples that we can unbox now. Sterling, you wanna say hi to the vlog? Hi, baby. This is Sterling. I don't think he's been featured in any of my videos yet, but he is a Weimariner. So here is the sample pack from Spoonflower that we are going to unbox now. So here are all the fabric samples and they also give you um, wallpaper samples as well, I guess, which currently I'm not interested in doing. So I'm just going to take those out. This sample pack was kind of expensive, but I guess they give you a lot of samples. It was like 20 bucks, but the shipping was free. So I want to pull out some fabric samples that I would be interested in. Okay, so I pulled out the samples that I was most interested in. Um, it's really handy with these samples because they also have on the back um, the fabric specs and then the use cases, which is really nice because this one is the only one that says it is used for tea towels. And so this gives you a feel of how thick the fabric is and how the colors will print. So this is probably what I'm gonna end up using to print my tea towels on. I also pulled out their Petal Signature Cotton and this is 100% cotton. It's used for quilting and craft projects, but I think this would be 
um, the fabric type that I choose if I do the bunting on my uh, top of my tent or a center piece of fabric on the table as an accent tablecloth. So I would be choosing the cotton for that. I also pulled out these three, the Cypress Cotton Canvas, the Performance Linen, and then the Recycled Canvas. And this is because I was also considering doing either zippered pouches or tote bags or makeup bags or something like that. So uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was mugs. And while the print shop quoted me at an okay price for mugs, I still wanted to see if there was an option that I could do that would also save me money and be less of a cost to my customers. And after doing some research, what I found was you can actually have companies print um, sublimation for you. So like, I don't want to invest in the sublimation printer and the paper and the inks and do all the troubleshooting. If they already know how to do it, I don't mind paying them to do my print my designs on paper and ship it to me and then I can heat press it. So I calculated it out and it seems like it would actually be cheaper in the long run. Obviously investing in the heat press will be a little pricey in, to start with, but might be good in the long run. So what I wanted to do was get some samples of these um, sublimations and DTFs, which is direct to film. And I actually got this idea from a Penas. I don't know if you watch her channel, but I don't know if she explicitly talked about it in a video, but I saw her um, unrolling the film and using her heat press and she talked about having it printed elsewhere. So that's what really kind of kicked off my research into it. And I think I found a company that does all the ones that I'm interested in and I requested some samples. So that is what we are going to unbox right now is and take a look at the samples they sent. what we have here. So this is what we got in the package. It looks like these are UV DTF decals with instructions and some samples inside. Um, I was interested in using uh, UV DTF decals on possibly glass cans and seeing how they turn out. Um, so here's the samples for those. Now, it's hard to tell on camera, but the they're printed a little fuzzy, um, but maybe that's just the quality of their samples, so maybe I would be fine. It does feel raised up like a sticker. I'm not sure if I like that. This would be something totally new to me. I've watched a couple YouTube videos, but there's really not a whole lot out there about the UV DTF. So that would be, I guess, all experimental. Now, this one's not labeled, uh, but this one says it's DTF regular. So I'm assuming these are the sublimation ones. There's no label on them and no instructions. So I don't know if those were missed, but it does look like they have quite a few samples in there. Um, I'm not used to sublimation, so all of this is new to me but it does look kind of faded. I mean, maybe it brightens up once you apply it to the product, but there's no instructions on which ones they're for, like which products these are for, or how hot you heat it, or how long you press it. So uh, maybe I'll email them and see if maybe they could pass along some instructions for the sublimation one. And then this one here is the regular DTF, and this one does have the instructions. These ones are more for um, t-shirts, like polyester spandex and 100% cotton and blends. And there is a lot of samples in here, which is really nice. I'm not sure if I will do t-shirts. 
I might, and then I might do my logo on them just for like me to wear at events. But yeah, that's really nice that they give you so many samples and the instructions. My square reader was also delivered, so I figured we'd unbox that together as well. So I believe this is the free one. So this is a sticker you can put on your payment sign so people know what kind of um, cards that you take. And so here is the square reader which has the lightning connector for your iPhone rather than the old headphone jack. This will plug into the bottom of your phone and then you can swipe cards through here. So there's that. And then I also purchased the Square Reader for chips and contact lists. This one I think was 40 or 50 bucks, which still isn't bad. These are probably some instructions. And then here is the reader itself. Oh, it looks like it comes with the old free one. So this is the one I was talking about with the headphone jack that probably isn't usable for a lot of things anymore these days, but I guess it doesn't hurt to keep it and have it. This looks like a charging cable for it. And here, here it is. So we'll probably charge in here. Looks like possibly a power Bluetooth button. And then people can tap their card here or insert for the chip. So I also opened a free bank account with Square. So I'm gonna try to keep that and use that as my like business bank account. And I believe they're sending me like a card to go with it, but I still have to like set this up and get the app. And I'm sure that's gonna be a whole process to add all my products and inventory. Oh, there's so much to do. Okay, so before I break for lunch, I have two large Amazon packages for market stuff that I wanted to show you um, before I take a break and eat. So let's open those up. I hope nothing's broken. Here we have the glass can set of eight. They come with the bamboo lids. Looks like this was packaged well. So I'm gonna have to check those. And then they also come with all the straws, which I think are also glass as well. So these are what I wanted to do with the UV DTFs around the around the outside of these. These look like they're becoming pretty popular. So I will have to go through and check and make sure all of those are good. But I figured it wouldn't hurt to do one set and just see how they sell. And if they don't sell well, then I know not to do them again in the future. And then the next thing in this box like these are some sample sublimation sheets and this is what it is if you have no idea what this is yet this is the tiniest mug press I have ever seen I saw some videos on it and they said it's a great starter mug press and I'm not sure if this is something I want to continue doing so I figured I'd get a small one it was on sale like $20 off but it had decent reviews so 
we'll be doing a video on this. I'm so excited. And with it being so cheap, I was surprised that they included some heat tape. There's also inside here some heat gloves. And then they sent the test sublimation prints. So that'll be something fun and different to try out. And then the last big box. We got here some sublimation mugs. I wanna check these out, make sure they're not damaged. Aren't they so pretty? So I got it with the blue handle and the blue inside, and then it's got the sublimation coating on the outside. So I thought these would be super cute with my flowers along these. Ah, I'm so excited. I just hope it works out. So those look like they're packaged well. And then lastly, I'm not going to open this one. Ugh. Well, this is heavy, but you can see from the picture, it is that white metal wire cube storage grid that I'm gonna use to display stuff. So I'm gonna leave this one packaged up so that way um, I don't have to worry about it missing pieces or anything. So I'll leave this boxed up, set it to the side, and I'll dig it out once we start doing the display stuff, which will be closer to the show. So that is all I have for a market prep haul unboxing. Oh, I do have the prints I can show you. Okay, so while we're still here on the floor, I wanted to show you the test prints I had done using that Celtic Knot um, painting I did in my last video. And they printed it on two sheets, um, two different types of paper. There's an uncoated and what they call, I believe, a satin, so it has a semi-sheen to it. It's not the high gloss, but it has a little bit. So, here are the two prints. Now, they printed so vibrantly, um, I was really impressed. This one is the one that's called Silk Cover. It has the semi-gloss sheen to it and it feels very smooth where this one is uncoated so it feels more matte it doesn't have quite a sheen to it and i don't even know on camera if you can tell the difference between these two this one the uncoated has a slightly whiter paper whereas this one's slightly um like ivory colored or off-white i would say but i don't even know if you can tell on camera so here's a close-up yeah it's so hard for me to choose between which ones which one i want to go with i think i'm going to go with the uncoated it just feels more like natural paper but yeah so these are huge prints I think they said this was 13 by 19 and I might actually get some prints done in this I don't know mini poster size I guess you think they would be pretty hanging in the booth in the back I don't know let me know what you guys think so that is it for all the unboxing show and tell. I'm going to go eat some lunch and then I think I'm going to get to work.